Papa Rovers finally get their man. That's right. John Dal Torreson has been confirmed as the new head coach of Papa Rovers heading into the 2022-2023 season. But what's that going to do to Rovers' chances this season? We're going to take a look at it. all of it next. Today, we're taking a look at the brand new squeaky clean appointment of John Dahl Thomas and the new head coach at Blackburn Rovers. And we'll get to that in just one second. If you know where you've been, smash your subscribe and keep back to all things Rovers related, championship related, world football related. We're going to know here, boys. Under one roof, it has been confirmed. Blackburn Rovers finally have their gaffer. New head coach extraordinaire, JDT's Blue and White Army. That's right. John Dahl Thomas joins uh, after a long Long and uh, a bewildered search. Rovers have finally sealed the deal, bringing in this young coach, of course, a veteran of of of, uh, of uh, European football from the past. Of course, in the Premier League, he, he had a little de debut way back when with Newcastle, but of course went on to bigger and better things with the likes of AC Milan and Feyenoord. But that was as a player. What do we have in a coach? We'll take a look at it, all of it in a minute. Of course, big shout out to my VIPs, there, the patrons, guys. Thank you very much for your love behind the scenes. You know who you are. But anyway, let's get into it. Of course, it's a day to celebrate as Rovers finally can get their pre-season uh, on track. Of course, just in time, of course, for the players to return this week uh, to training. But what have we got? What do we bring in uh, in the shape of John Dahl Thomason? Well, here it is. Let's take a look at his record. That's right. Signed, sealed, delivered. He's yours. He's mine. He is bloody ours. So, of course, we are looking forward to seeing what he's got in the bloody locker. So let's have a look at his recent record then, shall we, of course. Uh, started his, his uh, managerial or, or coaching career way back in 2011 as assistant over at Excelsior, of course. He did uh, take over the reins there at the 2013-2014 season. He had a good record uh, with Excelsior over, of course, in the Dutchlands there. I'm not sure what league they were in. Were they in the Eredivisie or were they in the Eredivisie uh, in the second tier? But either way, he did all right. 1.56 points per game over there, uh, managing 25 times his his, his reputation there saw him move actually to Roda, a, a bit of a step up, but you would imagine, uh, in the Dutch Dutch football pyramid. And again, didn't do it, didn't really work out for him over at Roda. Maybe a bridge too far too soon for him. Uh, and of course, only managing 0.65 points per game. That's what that's the stat that does scare me a little bit in this appointment. 0.65 points per game, uh, only 17 matches. But of course, combine that for over the course of the season, he probably did all right over in the in the Dutch. Ones. He did so much. Well, actually. After this, after that stint at Roda, uh, he took a bit of a break, it looks like, of course, uh, maybe a, a year uh, a, a year out uh, before he, he re rejoined uh, Dutch football as assistant to Vietis Arnhem, of course, over in the Dutch ones once again, as assistant, to, uh, still learning his trade, crafting, of course, his movement up the football ladder. Then, of course, he made a bit of a switch, a big switch, uh, over as to Dane, uh, Denmark's assistant manager for the national team. And again, he was in that post for quite some time, just under four years is there uh, uh, deputising for the Danish national coach before he was given his is a chance to regain uh, top honours, top slot as a as a as a uh, 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 staff member over at Malmo and what a fantastic job he's done there of course picking up uh, 1.86 points per game over in Malmo uh, he was there from January 2020 all the way through pretty much to, uh, to January 2022 two seasons there 90 matches and 1.86 points per game so his recent track record is, is a little bit, it's interesting. It's still, and again, we can't really judge him um, on his in his time at the Dutchlands. It was very fleeting. Very, uh, It was a long time ago, nearly 10 years ago uh, since the time over in, uh, in his first managerial role. So if we look back at his most recent track record over Malmo, that's not too shabby, 1.86 points per game. Um, and of course, uh, two titles. Back-to-back uh, -back titles as well. We left uh, in, the, in, of course, January 2022, and he's been out of work since. So take from that from what you will. But, of course, it, uh, I think it's a great start for him to come over to Ewa Park to, to rejoin or restart his managerial reign. Uh, so all in all, 134 matches he's been in charge. I mean, he's won 63 of them, uh, drawing 32, losing 39. We're picking up around about 1.65 points per game, which, if we look back at one of our videos we made a while back, um, uh, we were looking at some other candidates, uh, Gareth Ainsworth, Farker, all those kinds of boys. 
I don't think they had as high a points per game as a JDT. That's right. So that's a, some good bit of news there for Rovers fans as we look forward to this new hire. Uh, let's take a look at his last 10 games and as Gaffer uh, at Malmo. Uh, and there were some big results in here, of course. He actually he left on a bit of a whimper, actually, losing to Juventus 1-0 in the Champions League group stage. I think if they got through to the knockout stages, he probably would have still been there uh, there or thereabouts anyway. Uh, but of course, as you can see, an unbeaten stretch there of at least five games, two, four, uh, six games even there with wins over Gutenberg, Hack, uh, 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 draws at Hacken, uh, win over Kalmar is in there. A narrow loss to Matt, to, to Chelsea and Juventus are in that mix as well with a couple of wins as well. Uh, but not too shabby. And again, yes, I know where 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 some folks will go uh, with uh, with this appointment. Let me just uh, kind of clean up a little bit here. Where am I? Uh, I don't know if people will say that Malmo is 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 a juggernaut of Swedish football, and they're not wrong. They are not wrong. It's, uh, they, they are. They are. They're expected to be there or thereabouts uh, in, uh, in in the Swedish title race at the end of the season. Gutenberg, of course, up there. AEK also up there. But winning back-to-back -back titles ain't no slouch. And, and, of course, when you look at the goal-scoring uh, 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 stats as well, they did a, an OK job of it. It wasn't like, you know, Ronnie Dyler's uh, efforts over in Celtic, where, of course, they, he did win back-to-back -back titles over there. But Rangers, the bigger the bigger, the bigger competitive for Celtic, were not even in the division. Or if they were, they were nowhere near the shape of, of, of what they've been in the past. So it was a, it was a runaway a runaway title uh, win for Ronnie Dyler. Uh, this one, for for um, JDT is a little is a completely different story. They have got comp co uh, competition here. Gutenberg, of course, AEK, serious contenders. Halmstad as well, uh, names from the past. And I believe I think I've read a stat somewhere. There's only been three titles uh, for uh, Malmo over the last twenty odd years. So it's not been uh, as regular as it should have been. It probably should have probably could have been uh, for Malmo but so we've got to give credit to JDT for bringing those titles home for Sweden and again I'm not a master and again the Swedish league is a completely different ball game to that of the English football ladder so let's bear that in mind and of course a lot of people a lot of critics out there will remind us and I'm going to remind you uh, of course last time that John DT or John Dahl Thomason was in England in a, in a football capacity uh, he was as a player at Newcastle and he did flop Big style, that's right. He came with a lot of fanfare as a player after the Euro 96 uh, success, right? Did they win Euro 96 or, or Euro 92 or whatever? Uh, Dane, Denmark were on a high uh, in the early 90s and John Dahl Thompson was one of the figureheads, the faces of Denmark, the baby face assassin as he was. He came to Newcastle who were on the climb trying to buy buy the title like like we did. Um, and, and of course he failed. He fluffed his lines, but he went on. He kept on going. Uh, it, it was just a blip in the resume, just like we can say that uh, that Rhoda managerial stint was also a blip on his resume. So as a player, a blip on his resume at Newcastle, he went on to win the Champions League for AC Milan. He went on to win a Serie A title as well. He also went on to win a UEFA Cup for Feyenoord as well. So we know he is a football brain. He knows he's been there, he's seen it and he's done it. Ask uh, Mr. Company over at Burnley, them six-finger freakazoids, where his Champions League medal is. He hasn't got one. JDT is. He's got it around his cock, baby. He's got it around his cock. And he's going to be there at Brockle showing off his nuts. That's right. Forget Knutson. We've got JDT, big balls, and, of course, the Champions League medal to boot. Yeah, that might be as a player. What has he got as a manager? He's still early days. And that's why we've got Greg Broughton in the background there to do a lot of the other donkey work that Moby had to do in the past. Yes, Moby is a... Is a, an ex experienced campaigner and of course he could juggle a few things at the same time so let's focus uh, for JDT on the first team and that uh, and that alone let Greg do all the other stuff behind the work and again the fact that they've both worked and but uh, well J, uh, uh, Greg is, is coming in from from uh, Scandinavian football and of course the track record of JDT over in Sweden does give us the potential to maybe ex uh, explore the Scandinavian market and I know there's some statisticians out there on the social medias that have, that have narrowed it down to only a possible 28 uh, faces to come uh, to uh, to black or, or, or could be contenders they, they make the quota and all that kind of stuff and, and we should take it take that with a bit a better pitch assault they may know the stuff a little bit but uh, let's leave that uh, work for Greg and co to sort that out I'm excited about this because it's been a long time in the tooth uh, and of course when you look at some of the deadbeat managers that were out there that we were linked with if you follow the social media Facebook groups the the BRFCS uh, uh, forums the Craig Shakespeare's the Alan Pardews the Duncan Ferguson's for me this is a, a refreshing step 
Is it going to work out to be successful? I don't know. I think I think the jury's going to be out on this one. But for me, I think this season was always going to be. Oh, even if we had Farker, even if we had Carlos Calahal or whatever. And of course, even with JDT, this was going to be an, a transitional scene. I know some people out there will not accept nothing better than what we've just had in eighth spot. Forget it. Forget it for me. If we can get top half of the season, top half of the championship this season, then I think we're on the right track for something exciting. Hopefully, John DT has not been uh, out pressured uh, or pressured out of the job uh, by the fans, uh, by the board or by whoever. Hopefully, they, they've got a vision and the vision is uh, for, for now. Let's see how you do. Let's 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 let's. Beat Burnley once or twice this season. That'd be absolutely fantastic. That, that uh, well, survival, survival, of course, top honours. But beat them freaks. That's number two for me. And again, finish in the top half of the season. And then I think we're on the right track. Let's give them, let's give them two seasons to see where we are. Um, and, and then we'll take it from there. Anyway, I've got to go back to the graphics here, guys. Back to the graphics. Of course, hopefully John DT will do better than the last time we appointed a Norwegian manager. That's right, Henningberg. He only lasted uh, 10 games there. Is that right? 10 games. 10% win, uh, win record, which is absolutely horrific. Uh, and of course, uh, what's he got to do to beat the best? Well... You know what, Moby is standing. Look at that. We were so close to building him a pissing statue if he got us to the playoffs. So we would have built a Moby statue, but 40% win record, 108 games. Um, of course, clearly much better than the rest of the chasing pack. Paul Lambert with a 36.4. I think if he can nestle in between those two, Mowbray and, and Lambert, within his first full, full season, I think it'll be a okay for us. Let's take a look at what's been on, on social media then, shall we, about the appointment. Of course, Papa Rose have confirmed it two hours ago for me. Yes, it's 5.56 a.m. That's how keen I am. I'm up early to, to welcome, of course, John, D John DT uh, uh, over to Ewood Park. So I'm up bright and early, uh, early as a sparrow's fart. Uh, of course, of course, David Speedy, former Rovers legend. He said, good luck, John. Wishing you all the best. I hope you have a great season. I hope he does too. Chally Rovers said, welcome to Blackburn Rovers. John Dal Thompson as our new head coach. Remy Regner, Ben Rosen. Looking forward to seeing the, the team playing under you. John Dal Thompson's Blue and White Army. Aaron Holson here. He's here and he's sexy. And I can confirm that indeed. BRFC Ethan Diaz uh, says, oh, Rovers, do you know what he's worth? John Dal Thompson is the best on earth. The sinky Danish is just what we need. Firing us up up to the press. Premier League. Nice little cheeky rhyme there. Meanwhile, Joe Grimmel said, John Dahl Thomas said, ooh, ah, I want to know if you could take us up. He can hopefully take us up. Elaine said, a very warm welcome to, to Rovers. I'm looking forward to meeting you next season. John, John DT's Blue White Army. There's uh, Dave there. Rover Dave says, welcome to the party, pal. And of course, my old mucker there, John McLean. Uh, meanwhile, Adam Tosuki said, welcome aboard, John. An interesting appointment. Here's to hoping we've pulled off a masterstroke. We're all, we will all get behind you 100 100%. Adam Lodge said, welcome to Rovers, start of a new era. Come on, you blues. Paul Bristle, uh, Bert Wessel said, welcome to Rovers, JDT. Hopefully, I hope you become be Rovers' best ever gaffer. Uh, and of course, they are now confirming they're looking for some other folks, of course, part time academy coach, girls' regional talent, senior scout. And of course, please note, the uh, Rovers' head coach role has been filled. That's right. Goodness gracious me. What an appointment for us. What about the Rovers' sees mafioso? I asked them last night, as of course, we were trying to have a Twitter space last night. Night, but I had I hit a lot of roadblocks. But here are some of the overseas mafias with their own opinions about the appointment. So it looks like John Dahl Thomason will be Blackburn Rovers' new manager. Um, it's all but gone through. I, mean, I think it's just a work permit that's holding things up. So it's um, it's um, it, it's it's confirmed without being you know signed sealed and delivered but um he's a big name in the game he's an, he he will be an exciting appointment for me uh he's got you know pedigree in the game all right it didn't work out in newcastle but he's done well as a player you know he's achieved great things with ac milan um feyenoord um and others i'm sure um but yeah he's a big name so that's got to be a good thing a big name in the game he he should be able to attract good talented players from scandinavia working together with director of football greg um and i think i think 
it could be a really good appointment. I'm really optimistic about it, uh, about him. And, uh, he, you know, he's done well in Sweden with Malmo and he's got Champions League experience. He's a winner as a player. He's he's won the Champions League as a player, um, and I'm sure he's got good knowledge, um, good football knowledge. Um, how that will translate into the Championship remains to be seen, but I think he's got the quality and the pedigree to achieve. Um, I think he. From what I can tell, um, I watched in some of an interview that he did and uh, he talks very well um, and he he's a, he seems like a very driven character and he demands a lot from his players. Um, but to me, that's a winner and that's what we need. We need a no-nonsense type of guy, but also a clever type of guy. So I think... I think he he's he seems to me like a well-rounded character, and I th I think he'll be a well-rounded manager for Blackburn Rovers. So good news. So Rovers have more or less well Rovers haven't, but it's been ninety percent confirmed. It's been on Sky Sports News and everything that we've got ourselves a new manager, and I cannot say I know too much about him. Uh, we're just going to go into a little bit of detail, give myself um, an opinion on it. But yeah, looking on the stats, he's got a 46% win ratio with Malmo over in the Sweden lead, winning uh, the league twice and winning the Swedish Cup with them as well. He's previously been uh, the assistant coach at a national team in Denmark, the national actual international team being Denmark's assistant manager. Um, he's got a win percentage of 46%. Um, scoring 1.5 goals per game. No, sorry, picking up 1.5 points per game on an average. Uh, scoring 1.4 goals um, per game on an average as well. Um, it's about time we've recruited a manager. He's not the most experienced manager, but um, it does look as, um, like a step in the right direction because he's coming from a Swedish lead, would have just won the title twice, so it proves he's worth appointing for winning stuff um that he proves he's got enough experience to like get the best out of his players because they've won the lead twice obviously in the cup he's also managing champions lead out of 14 games in champions league they've actually won five and for not being a big team malmo um that's pretty impressive i think um so yeah is it the right appointment is the better names we could have got possibly yeah there probably is a few that we've got could have had which we haven't got like Farky went to Munch and Glad bike um that Portuguese fella he went to the Saudi League team. Uh but we were rumoured with Ferguson Ainsworth would they have been better? I'm not too sure. Is it a good appointment? I hope so. Um I really do hope so. There's not like I said there's not too much information I know about him. I know more of him as a player when he were at Newcastle, Milan and Valencia and Feyenoord. Um, so I know more about him as a player because he's quite a young manager. He's only been managing since 2013 at a, a team I forgot. I forgot off the top of my head, so I do apologise about that. But statistically, he looks a good step in the right direction. Hopefully he comes and gets the best out of all these players. Um, but yeah, I, I, the main priority is, I think, is playing play, players in the right positions this season because under Mowbray, it was a bit stupid, really, and too frustrating for me as a fan watching Gallagher on wing and Bradley Johnson as a false nine. So hopefully it's, he gets the best out of players and plays them in the best ability they can and in the correct positions. That's what I'm hoping for. It is going to be interesting to see our starting eleven next year and see who our captain is. Hopefully it's Travis. I'm gonna, that's my opinion. I want Travis to be it. Hopefully it's going to be Travis. But yeah, it's a, it's a step in the right direction. Um... Yeah, that's pretty much all I've got to say. Hopefully he gets the best out of players. Um, could we have done better? Time will tell. We've got to get behind him, um, support him. It might even be a shaky few starts because he's never managed in England.
But yeah, we've got to give him a chance. We can't just be booing after a few games or whatever and saying he's not good enough. We've got to give him a chance to settle in, get the best out of these players. Hopefully, he can command them into the playoff positions because that should be our aim going off the season we've just had. But yeah, hopefully he's the right manager for the job. Well, JDT, first things first, welcome to Blackburn, where we won't be able to pronounce your name for a good couple of months. And of course, we hate Burnley and we want to get back to the Premier League. Next thing, is he going to do a good job as a manager? Well, uh, to be honest, right now, because we're managerless, I couldn't really care. As long as we actually get a manager before the start of the season, that's a good thing, isn't it? And obviously, I've looked at his stats on online, and they are pretty promising. Maybe even good enough to take us back to the prem. No one knows, though. Um. But obviously, it's not just him in charge. You've got everyone in charge of all that down at Rovers. I don't even know what they're all called because there's that many of them. But between a lot of them, they need to buy in some good players to replace the ones that are departing. Because obviously we're going to end up missing players like Daryl Lennon, Joel Rothwell, Ryan Ayambi if he goes. We're going to end up missing players like that if we can't replace them up to the standard anyway. Um, but all in all, welcome to Blackburn. I hope you enjoy your position as a manager at Rovers. Uh, I hope you feel welcome and our fans will definitely make you feel welcome if you let us, well, if you get us to where we want to be, our fans will definitely welcome you. <laughs> um, Get us back to winning ways. Our fans will love you. And finally... JDT's Blue White Army. And just so that you don't know, that it has been confirmed. Here it is on the BBC website. John Dahl Thompson has been appointed on a three-year uh, deal. It's exciting times for her, for them. It's exciting times for me. Uh, and, of course, we've got to get busy. We've got to get busy planning the new season. Yes, of course, we were linked with Carlos Cabajal, Daniel Farker, Gareth Ainsworth, Michael Beale and Duncan Ferguson. But for me... Um, Realistically, when you look at those names, yes, there's some exciting names in there, and of course, that's not. I'm not going to lie. It would have been absolutely fantastic if we had appointed Daniel Farker. That would have. That's the name that was out there for me from the get go. From the bloody get go, I wanted Daniel Farker. Now, where has he ended up? He's landed on his bloody feet at Borussia Mönchengladbach. A team close to my heart, born about 10 minutes from the bloody stadium I was. My mum's from that neck of the woods. They are my German side, so I'm quite happy for that appointment for Borussia Mönchengladbach. They were not so long ago Champions League team. I think about a season ago, maybe, maybe two years ago. Of course, they had a bit of a shit show last season. Uh, and of course... He's, land, he's punching above his weight. Uh, so for me, there was no... When Munch and came around, there was no way, no how Rovers could compete in that market. Carlos Cabajal, on the other hand, yes, contender perhaps. He wanted to come back to the English game, but where's he gone? He's gone to, to the Middle East, chasing the money, chasing the dragon or whatever they want to call it. The cash, the moolah, whatever. Yes, it would have been okay, but he he has got a, a lot of clubs. More clubs than bloody Tiger Woods. Uh, Gareth Ainsworth was, would, 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 would have been great. Of course, the fan opinion. I never really got on board about that. And I did see something out there on the old Rovers chat thing about, you know, the the the, the appointing a fan, you know, having a fan in, in, the, in the office uh, c uh, chatting amongst the big wigs. It probably wouldn't have uh, felt right or sat right uh, with, uh, with with them. Uh, and again, he could be a little bit touchy about uh, the, the future of Rovers. Michael Beale, not too, not too sure about. Duncan Ferguson, yes, of course, he might have got the phone call from Carlo Ancelotti to recommend him. But for me, he was always a, a major question. Yes, he is probably good for the Everton role. And again, it would be similar to that of Gareth Ainsworth but for me I think someone else can uh, can explore that avenue but all in all John Dahl Thomason coming in Blackburn Rovers is fresh refreshing it is a bit of a gamble yes it is but hopefully with the appointment of the director of football to take a lot of that slack a lot of that weight off the manager's shoulders and now uh, uh, convert uh, the, the, the shell of Tony Mowbray into this new head coach and of course prioritise the first team football 
and then hopefully uh, uh, we can move towards a new era. If we were to somehow beat uh, Tony Mobus' eighth place finish last season, you know what? Then we're, of course, we're onto something special. And then uh, attention will probably be can we keep a hold of John Tyler Thompson? Again, let's have a look. The hard work starts now. The players are returning to, to training. And, of course, hopefully the contract situations will be sorted out. Greg might be able to sweeten the deal with with uh, with at least Ryan Iambi. Lenahan looks like he's off to Middlesbrough. And, of course, Joe Rothwell's out the door uh, as well. So let's get all the business done. Let's take a, Let's explore the European market. Let, let Greg do his business and let JDT take care of the training. And, of course, uh, hopefully we'll see something special this time around at Ewa Park. That is it, guys. That's all I've got for you until then. Then we'll be covering uh, the appointment of John Dar Thompson in a bit more detail. We're going to take a look at what kind of football does he play? Uh, what's his first team going to look like? We're going to have, of course, the first podcast. Hopefully, we can do it this week and get the opinions of the of, of the of the extensive overseas mafia. But until then, boys, make sure you smash your thumbs up, smash your subscribe. I'll see you soon for the next one, of course. Until then, boys, we're done.